Hedge Hedge Tube Dwellers, welcome to another Mad Bag Gamer Commentary. I'm on my Demon Hunter. I'm gonna make this a fairly short video, but I wanted to do another little demo of some of what's going on. Show you some of the enemies I'm dealing with right now and the way I'm using some skills. And I actually just used some incorrectly, but that's okay. So, uh, I'm in Act 2. I'm in the Desolate Sands. I'm not going to do anything quest related, of course, but here in a second I'm going to get into some of my abilities. And then we're going to go check out a couple different enemy types as I rule a bunch of baddies. Alright, so uh, I'm using the Bola Shot as of right now. Uh, with Volatile Explosives, it gives the AoE enough range that I feel like I can pretty reliably hit multiple targets, even when they're kind of sparsely spread out. And the weapon damage with the extra 110% uh, explosive after the weapon damage hits instantly, uh, uh, initially, um, makes it the most damaging ability at least to a single target, and with the fact that I can make it hit a bunch of different targets, it really makes it start to shine. Um, I still like Hungering Arrow a lot, because when using Bola Shot, um, a lot of the smaller, fast enemies can still be really an annoying. I'm still using Rapid Fire. I still love Rapid Fire. Um, I got a new rune for it, which is kind of interesting. It, it adds a snare effect to Rapid Fire, which I think is neat and could be really useful. However, Withering Fire makes it cost less hatred, so I can I can be more spamful with my Rapid Fire use. Still using Caltrops. Um, it immobilizes enemies when it springs now, which is really cool, and has some synergy with Spike Trap, which uh, is another hatred use ability. Um, I find that sitting still with rapid fire, and especially with this rune on it that reduces the hatred cost, I don't quite use my hatred up very quickly, so I've been uh, putting in a little spike trap here and there. It's really neat how spike trap works, too. I can set one out wherever my mouse is. I can only have three of them out. After three seconds, it will activate, and if enemy enemies come in to this little uh, black circle, it will blow up, causing 275% uh, weapon damage, which is which is a very nice amount. That's a very heavy amount. I still have uh, Vault. I've got a rune on it that allows me to shoot nearby targets whenever I Vault. And then I've got Preparation, which uh, gives me uh, all of my discipline back. This is incredibly handy for using uh, my two defensive abilities, Caltrops and Vault. If, ever, if I'm in a tight spot, um, sometimes I'll use so much Vault and so many Caltrops that I will run myself out of discipline, and now I can uh, easily just uh, prepare it all right back up. So uh, let's run around and take a peek at some of the enemies and and some of how my setup right now deals with them. Let's get a little quick moving on. Another thing I like about uh, the vault and preparation combo is that I can travel pretty quick. Ah, bugs. I can travel pretty quick and uh, use all my discipline for vaulting around to travel and still have confidence that I'll have discipline if I need it if a battle should start. So there's a couple baddies down pretty easily. I'm getting close to the end of Act 2, but I uh, haven't quite beat it yet. I have already uh, spoiled it for myself, and uh, that's what I love about Bola Shot, seeing six enemies go down all at the same time. I have already spoiled the act for myself and seen videos of the end boss. Oh yeah, my passives. I didn't even touch on my passives whatsoever. So I'm using two that kind of have some synergy. Um, Thrill of the Hunt makes an arrow immobilize a target every 10 seconds. Um, so whenever I'm running around, uh, 10 seconds goes by between battles almost every time. So my first arrow is always an immobilizing arrow, like that one. It brooded him. Get a bomb going off there. Yeah, you guys can see the damage that spike trap. That spike trap nearly one-shotted a bunch of those uh, a bunch of those baddies. We, the Zakarum, have endeavored to make Chaldeum a city of mercy and uh, My other one, I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that. Uh, my other one is Call the Weak, which increases my damage to slowed enemies. Uh, seeing as as to how much I use uh, Caltrops, I fight slowed enemies quite a bit, so that's really useful. For a while, I did have this uh, steady aim which, if I'm 10 yards away from all enemies, I get 20% extra damage. In a group, that works pretty well, but when just out here doing it alone, uh, I can't really abuse that a whole lot. You'll notice that I spend quite a bit of time within 10 yards of enemies. 
gonna shoot some randomly over there. We're gonna go over in a second and see. I think they're all dead. It looks like it anyway. These little uh, these little hornets are really annoying. They uh, they shoot these little wasps that you see, and I can't actually hit the little green wasps. Um, and little green wasps do a lot of damage. I just got hit by one there for 70 something damage. They are quite annoying. You basically are forced to dodge it. Which uh, just makes you use a little strafing. Whoa! We have three worms. There, I just used all my hatred in a couple little spike traps. Let's see if I can trick them into coming into the spike trap. Whoa! Don't know what I'm doing there. There are a lot of worms here. They are not kidding with these worms right now. I still, above all else, that rapid fire is just too awesome. That rapid fire is like as cool as the seismic slam or whatever it's called for the uh, barbarian where he does the bigger My cone AoE. Lie beneath this desert. Perhaps even beneath the sands yeah, yeah, cool. I don't want any spoilers, man. Shut up and the go Russian away. We're not, not trying to check them. out quests right now. In thousands of sense. years of records, I cannot find a single account of a prisoner surviving exile to the desolate sands. The wastes are littered with bones that have been picked dry by the enviously circling bloodhawks or desperate raccoons. Those who die there meet their end without the sanctity of the light. Without the sanctity of the light. Poor chaps. I feel for them. Ooh, a ruby! In Act 2, I've been uh, getting gems. Chipped gems so far. I've not find it, found anything except for chipped. I've also started finding some socketed items, too. I keep mistapping 4. I need to uh, work on my muscle memory of jumping to 4. I don't use it often enough, and 4 is where my spike trap is. I might just uh, change my buttons around so that preparation is on 4, because preparation by far is the spell that I use the least right now, so... I want to put it on the hotkey that feels the most awkward for me. I want to put uh, spells that I want to use often on the hotkey that feels the easiest for me. As of right now, 4 is feeling kind of awkward. Ooh, more bugs. Another swarm. So they've started with the little wasps of this area. Not to join the Mage's army. I should have listened. In the morning, they're sending the infantry against the Bajerai. I don't know how we're supposed to survive. Maybe we're not. It's so beautiful here. Maybe if I hid in the trees, they wouldn't notice I was gone. Huh. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, so with these little wasps that they've started introducing in this area, they've, they've uh, just now really started to abuse the geometry and spatial awareness of any fights that you're in. They've just now made you... Uh, given you a requirement where you kind of have to be aware of what's going on, you kind of have to watch some attack animations from your enemies. The brass throat that the desolate sands were created after a mage clan battle sent out explosive energies that devastated the entire area. But he doesn't account for the enormous skeletons. No one has ever identified them. Were they a lost race of giant beasts? Demons? Mythical dragons? We may never know. I'm trying to see Bola Shot really shine here. I'm trying to really get a feel for how big its AoE is. It works really well in these swarms. And if you can hit the, sp the really small, really fast moving targets, then it works pretty well on them because the small, fast moving targets are generally pretty weak. And uh, Bola Shot does enough damage that you can take them out with just one or two shots. But sometimes you can get caught in a little loop where you're not hitting any of your shots and they're just running around doing damage to you. And it can get uh, it can get pretty annoying. I've got to say that Hungering Arrow has a lot better potential for quickly dealing with uh, those harder to hit targets just because it seeks them. And there is 80 damage from a wasp, another 70-70. My bud code though uh, helped me out with some vitality. We were playing, we were swapping items back and forth. I had some intellect stuff that his wizard could use, and he hit me up with some vitality stuff. Got like 1,200 hit points now. That's I feel much powerful. better. Like at level 19, I had like 600. Got a couple items, I've got 1,200. <laughs> Ooh, a new active skill marked for death. 
This might be a great time. Ooh, a new uh, rune. Rune for whoa. I have not seen one of these guys yet. The sand dweller. Let me stop being ridiculous about my abilities here. We get some bombs set up. Down he During goes. the Mage Clan Wars, the Vigeri summoned giant demons to guard their estates. After hmm. years of patrolling the desert sands, the demons' hides became thick as stone and caked with grit. In the end, they have outlived their masters. Now, only the glowing runes on their skulls belie their true origin. It's fire damage to all enemies within six yards. So it adds some AoE to evasive fire. That's kind of neat. Um, I almost want to try evasive fire as my primary ability. Uh, matter of fact, here, hold on. Let's switch spike trap real fast. I want to put spike trap over here instead because four feels weird for it. And now I'll probably be hitting it because I'm not used to spike trap being over there. That's fine, though. And let's, uh, let's switch bola shot up. Let's just have a little fun here. Let's put Evasive Fire on with its brand new rune. Now uh, Evasive Fire has some AoE capability. It's very light AoE, but uh, here, this will be a first perfect chance to... Uh... So Evasive Fire, the only bad thing about it is that if enemies are getting close to me, it will use my Discipline up very quickly. Now the cool thing about that is that I've got preparation, so if I ever need Discipline, I can just get it back pretty much instantly. Three? Oh boy, I almost forgot that right there. It shoots really slow. It feels like evasive fire is just not... It's probably more the uh, weapon I'm using than anything. Seems like it fires really slow, though. I'm not sure how much I like it. It does look like it's doing pretty good damage, and it's instant. It doesn't travel the way Bola Shot does, so it makes it a lot easier to hit those small, fast-moving targets like those little wasps. Waypoint that I've already activated. Oh boy. Where are you? Where are you? Couldn't see him for a second there. Looks like my little uh, trap set up. Did a pretty good job. And it looks like my my evasive fire is, is doing decent justice for taking these guys out pretty quickly. This is a big area and I'm finding a wall in the area right in the middle of what I would expect to be uh, not restricted territory. Like this is the middle of the map. I don't know why I'm seeing an edge. It's a weird place for one. Oh man, oh man. Let's get something out here. Oh man. I'm getting ready to have to use preparation. I am ready to. Let's use it now. Let's put another bomb down. Another bomb and let's get serious. Sweet revenge. Of course, the second I start using it, all of the guys just go down. I think they were pretty close anyway. I'm not trying to say that it's that amazing. Rapid fire is pretty awesome, but it's not like the most all-powerful. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, God. Not what I meant to do. I did not mean to throw that belt on the ground. I meant to quickly react to the swarm. That might be nice for my Barbarian, and it's a low required level. We'll be holding on to that. You can put things in your chest, and then you can open your chest with other characters, and your full chest is still there, everything that's in it. it uh, it's shared between all your characters. So in one way, that sucks, because it, that puts your storage on a, uh, on a level for all characters, so like you can't necessarily store a whole lot for a bunch of different characters. But uh, in another way, that's that's really cool, because... I can easily just transfer items that I find with my Demon Hunter over to my Barbarian or wherever. It looks like uh, when using Evasive Fire, if you don't have the discipline for it to cast, it'll just keep firing as normal and it won't do the backflip, which is cool. It's good that Evasive Fire doesn't trigger at all and it forces you into regular shots. That would be, that would be just purely atrocious. I kind of like it. Especially with that little explosion animation. It looks really cool. I like the way it looks a lot better than I like uh, a lot better than I like the uh, look of the bola shot. Go ahead, get rooted. I got an explosive for ya. These dust eaters have got some hit points now. And it doesn't matter, and their corpses come off the top. 
Oh, and then the top burns. Does a little AoE there. After they die, that's that's craziness. That rapid fire is just so awesome. Boy, I've just got all kinds of people. That is one thing I've got to say so far, is that, uh, to my knowledge, there is no way to uh, block people from joining your party. So, anytime they want, they can just jump right in. And you see Brian being the gentleman he is, jumping uh, straight out the second he gets in, the second he finds out that I'm recording anyway. And I've come full circle in this area, so that's where I started. Um, I feel like I've seen just about all the enemies of this area, but I feel like I there's a couple enemies that, uh, there are these deceivers that are really cool that I want to show you guys. So I might go back to that waypoint over there, and uh oh, we got hero time. Let's set a trap there. Oh, uh, it looks like it went off on just one guy. Well again. But I'm getting some good damage done not even using rapid fire, so that makes me feel fairly good. As much as I was using that to begin with, I was kind of worried that I would become kind of dependent on it, and I'd never really switch out of using rapid fire. But I'm glad to see that I can put together good combinations of stuff using spike trap and uh, my uh, snare, my caltrops. That was nothing. I haven't fired a single shot. That was one spike trap did this damage to both of these guys. To some degree, that backflip on evasive fire is kind of annoying. I kind of like that it happens automatically and that it doesn't take additional time, because whenever I cast Vault, I can't be casting other things. So I kind of like that, that it happens like in tandem with a shot, but at the same time, it is a bit annoying. Ah! More champions! And rapid fire time! Rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire! They are not going down as quickly as I would like, but that's okay. Because that will do them in. Socketed Ring of the Slayer and a Brigadine coat that I did not intend to pick up. Some kind of staff in there, too. Okay, so uh, let's jump over to another zone real fast. Alright, I've come to the Black Canyon Mines. I'm not certain, but I believe there are there's uh, some instances of an enemy type out here that I'd like to show you. Deceivers. We've got some champion sand wasps. This is going to be a pain. I need to make sure I don't get hit by any of their wasps. I just got one of them. And actually, it didn't look like it did much damage to me, surprisingly enough. And here we go with some fallen. First couple, down to that trap real nice and easy. And it's time to break back. Down they go. Oh, that hurts. 100 and something damage, 140. That's no good. So, uh, those masters that we saw, the real tall red guys, those are uh, a throwback to the Fallen in Diablo 2. Stinging winds, where am I going here? They, uh, they now have a bit more variation. Ooh, a fallen hound. I think that's the first time I've seen hounds. I don't remember them the first time I came through here. It's another real neat thing about these areas is they don't always have the exact same sets of enemies. They do change at times. I'm one-shotting almost everything over here. I'm even one-shotting packs of it. Come get it! Come get it! I'm gonna let him walk into that trap. Just because I want to see it. the champions are larger and the lunatics more devastating, it is the shaman priests who lead the fallen. These shrunken, unintimidating demons can easily kill an enemy with their fireballs. But it is their ability to resurrect their imp allies that allows them to command such high respect from their Oh, we got a hero. And I'm walking into mass wasps. And let's start the barrage. I need more discipline. Oh, you need discipline, huh? Well, get discipline. Rooted. I'd like to see you go somewhere now. 
Oh, that shaman is resurrecting Fallen too. That is not good. I want to stop that at pretty much all costs. Instantly, if possible. Or I just want to mow down all the Fallen he just brought back to life. Oh, I'm getting him. Oh, he's getting there. I got it. He was a purple named too, which means he is always out here somewhere. I suppose that probably means that the Fallen are always in this zone. Maybe it's just certain enemies that randomize. Oh, check that head out. <laughs> just rolling around in the sand. Don't mind me, I'm just a head. Just a bodiless head. What kind of treasure did that hero bear? A little bit of stuff, not anything really. Face of fire. I need to compare. I need to, uh... I need to take close note of how much damage this thing's doing on average. And then I need to swap over to the Hungering Arrow and see the difference. I know you want to pop up. 80, I think, is what it was looking like. The uh, AoE is like 20 or so. Yeah, I'm seeing 70. I saw a 66, a 65. There's a 79. There was an 80. There's a 59. Okay, so from 60 to like uh, 80. Let's go back to Hungering Arrow real quick. Fire damage over 3 seconds or increased chance to pierce. The increased chance to pierce gives Hungering Arrow uh, the AoE potential that I really like. Um, and then it still has kind of good single target potential just in that it's 115% weapon damage. And fires, well, the same speed. It's your weapon speed that determines how quick these abilities can be fired off. I want to see some uh, some hits though. I want to see. I don't know why I wanted to do that bomb. The bomb one shot at him too. 82. So that was a bigger number than I saw. 63. I bet it's real comparable. 80. I think it's a little bit more. Let me go back and look one more time here. The evasive fire is 125% weapon damage, so it should be doing just a little bit more. But of course, then there's the whole ability to. Uh, seek targets. I don't know. I don't know exactly how much I value that at. It's hard to put a number on it. And it looks like I'm kind of working back into a corner. I got a ways to go. Um, I might just go ahead and call it. Uh, I think this has been a neat little demonstration. I've shown you a couple things. I've shown you a little bit more progression of, uh, oh yeah, there's this weird companion ability. You can get a raven. As of right now, it looks mostly useless, but uh, apparently later I can get runes for it that, uh, allow you to summon different creatures. Oh, sorry for the abrupt cut. Um, I'm dealing with some fraps errors here all of a sudden. Uh, I'm gonna have to round this out though. I'm gonna have to uh, make this the end of the episode. So thank you for watching everybody. Stay tuned for some more walkthrough content coming from likely my barbarian, but God only knows which hero. Some more Act 1 walkthrough. Yeah, see you later.